Thank you very much for those fantastic insights, Sean. Uh, next up, we have a very uh, exciting segment for you. It's all about Startup Nation and what technology should be on your radar. And excitingly, I'm joined now by Yari Dolman, a partner at Antler, to just discuss some of the upcoming market trends related to the future of work. And um, I guess the first thing to do, Yari, is just ask you to introduce yourself to everyone and what it is you do and what it is that Antler does. Absolutely, and uh, thanks a lot for having me today. Uh, so my name is Jauri Duleman. I am a partner at Antler here in the Netherlands. And uh, maybe to start with uh, what Antler is. Um, Antler is a global early stage venture capital firm that invests in very young companies, but in a very different way than most venture capital investors. We actually look first and foremost for exceptional individuals, and then we bring them together in a large scale to help to form co-founding teams of new businesses. So it's really a different model of actually finding the best talent and helping them to get started, and then we provide support along the way. And we do that now in, uh, uh, in you know, six different continents, um, with multiple different investment funds, and I'm responsible for, uh, for the Netherlands. So in a nutshell, it's working with founders on very early stage businesses. Amazing. So I guess with that and your, or, you know, must be on the cutting edge of technology and business, um, let's just get straight into the meat of it. And I guess talk about kind of the, the trends that you've seen emerge this year, because it has been a tumultuous six months, to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, I think, you know, COVID obviously put things into acceleration. But it's also interesting to know that many of these things were already starting from before, right? But yeah. this year has really accentuated and highlighted some of the needs, challenges, and also opportunities. And you're right. I mean, we are uh, facing a lot of these cutting edge ideas on a daily basis. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm personally super excited about everything uh, that's going on and, and you're know, happy to share some details. I mean, maybe to, to, to start off with, um, with a, a bit obvious one, but you know, distributed teams, yeah. of course, are uh, uh, you know, uh, ever more present now. And um, whereas, uh, you know, the first thing that everybody, you know, started doing when they were forced to because of the lockdowns was to start using video conferencing tools to kind of continue to at least speak with each other. Now there is a whole slew um, of other tools that you can use to actually have a much more high quality way of collaborating rather than just video calls and emails. Okay. Um, and so that's one very interesting space where we see that, you know, things are kind of popping up uh, like mushrooms almost, but at the same time, um, it's, uh, uh, everybody's also new to kind of working in that virtual office environment. So right? it's and kind of quite experimental and there's a lot of like people trying out new things going on. Are there any companies specifically there that you find interesting in that new uh, collaboration space? Yeah, absolutely. So I like to think of it in, uh, in two layers. There is the layer of the actual environment of the office, basically. And there, um, you know, one example is a, is a company that we've also invested in called the Timico, who is actually taking the entire office structure of different rooms and so on online. And we'll see them in a moment, so then we can yeah. kind of see what that's, a bit, uh, what that's like a bit more. Um, but then there are also the uh, companies and the tools that actually allow for better collaboration within such an environment. And one example that I'm, uh, I'm very fond of there is Miro, uh, which is uh, you know, really helping with kind of creative brainstorming by allowing teams to collaborate um, in a very intuitive way with kind of virtual whiteboards and things like that. Amazing. Um, so what about some of the other trends? So you obviously we touched on... Um one of the first ones, which was like communication and collaboration. What about some of the other things like maybe mental health? Is that something that you've looked at? Yeah, so I think in general, what we've started to see, of course, is that uh, a lot of people as they work at home, um, they quickly start feeling some uh, symptoms, negative symptoms like, you know, physical fatigue, but also loneliness and other challenges of basically not being together and not physically moving around anymore. So, uh, you know, both on the physical wellness and on the mental wellness, we do see that employers are starting to take more initiative, but also, you know, the employees are demanding more support in that space, right? And so on the physical side, just to give an example, I think, um, uh, at least for me, I'm not sure how it's been for you, but uh, to keep track of your nutrition, right? And to actually come up with good things to eat all throughout the day and to buy all the ingredients, to kind of have recipes and to actually cook the food is quite a challenge, right? So a lot of yeah. us resort to, you know, fast food or delivery and maybe less healthy things. Um, and that's a real challenge. And there are companies stepping into that space that are helping individual people to better, you know, curate and personalize nutrition advice so that you can actually have, you know, an easier way of having a healthy lifestyle on the physical wellness side, right? Yeah. An example of that is Clear, which is a company that we also invested in out of Antler. Um, then on the mental side, which you mentioned, I think uh, one of the big challenges is that uh, people feel disconnected, basically. Mm. You're on these calls all day long, but you don't feel the personal connection. 
And um, it's very interesting to see that there are now companies popping up who are addressing that part of bonding and kind of human connection between you know, remote and, and uh, distributed team members. Can you give some examples on how that's happening? Because that's something that I always find with, um, so you know, I, I've, like most of us kind of have that WhatsApp friends group where there are a lot of you there. We've had a few video chats, but basically every time you kind of, you know, naturally if you're in a group, you, you, know, you go off into smaller little groups and then connect as a big one. It's quite hard when you're in, you know, say 12 or 14 people to actually have a meaningful connection with anyone there. So what were some examples of how companies have been trying to deal with that? Yeah, so, so I think, you know, it's, uh, it's fair to say that you do need to organize for it, right? So it yeah. will not happen automatically, even if you have the tools. And that in the beginning feels a bit artificial because, oh, now we need to schedule time to actually have fun. So, I mean, <laughs> that, that is actually true. But then yeah. once you're in that time, you can do different things. And actually there are creative ideas and games and kind of social interactions that are now popping up, which before basically weren't relevant because you would be in person. And an example that I like a lot um, is from a company called Atium, who we'll be speaking also a bit later. Um, and they have this game that they call the GIF tournament, where basically you, know, you, are, you are coming up with the most creative possible GIF against your colleagues. And it's just a really <laughs> funny way to kind of, you know, get to know each other a little bit and laugh at each other and connect in a totally different way than having a work conversation. Yeah. So there are those kinds of activities that are popping up and then they are supported by digital tools and platforms which make it very easy to do that basically when you're at a distance. Perfect. Um, and what about some of the other kind of trends you've been looking at? So we've mentioned collaboration, we've mentioned like physical and mental health. What are some of the other big areas that you've uh, been kind of really nailing down on it uh, yeah Antler. yeah absolutely so there, there's one um uh which i think is, is not maybe the first thing you think about but again it becomes quite apparent how important that is and this is around supporting written communications okay. obviously you know if you and i are sitting in a room we have a lot of nonverbal communication going mm -hmm. on and a lot of kind of expressed words but now when everything is digital and remote there's more kind of email, you know, Slack, WhatsApp, and these kind of things. And oftentimes, uh, a large part of the content and the value of the message is lost. So we see that there are actually companies coming in now and using technology, and in particular AI, to flag how text can be improved, written text. Oh, okay. Um, and an example of that, uh, which I'm quite fond of, is, uh, is Textio, which is um, basically analyzing in real time as you create messages that you want to then send out either for recruitment purposes or for marketing purposes or for internal communication purposes. And they will flag things like, this seems like maybe you're introducing a bit of bias here. Are you sure you want to do that? Right? And, it, and it makes you think more about how you convey the message so that at the end of the day, you can have more impact and, and achieve what you're trying to achieve. And does it use kind of AI to manage that? How does it go about like actually, you know, uh, scanning it? And how do you, I guess on, on side of that, how do you also put in like, do you have to mark what message you're showing? So, you know, if you're sending like an email to a colleague, I guess it's quite different to being a CEO and sending something to a company. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, of course, these tools will need to be, in the end of the day, tailored a bit to the use case that they have, mm. right? So whether it's recruitment or internal communications can be quite a different thing. Yeah. But then with that, you can kind of set the parameters and then using all the data that they analyze, they can figure out the patterns and you know the likely kind of personal emotional connotations or biases and so on that are in that another example by the way is um, a company called speechify uh, what they do is that they help people to create better social media posts mm. by actually suggesting high quality content that again will be uh, recommended also based on what they know from analyzing a lot of data receives you know good responses if you share it on social media so yeah. again it makes it easier for you as a writer to actually write good content. Hmm. So I guess where then is Antler kind of investing amongst most of these? Is there like a, a spread where you're putting like more of your uh, eggs behind as it were? Or is it, are you doing kind of like a, a broad spread? Yeah, so um, the way that we uh, tend to work with our founders is that, uh, first of all, we as an investment firm overall, we're sector agnostic. Hmm. Um, and uh, then if you look at the types of um, concepts that we invest in, um, uh, it is oftentimes the individual founders coming into the founder cohorts that are bringing those ideas, but we do work very closely with them to iterate on those things, right? And for yeah. us, what's really important is that at the, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's very scalable, right? And that it solves a real problem. But to be honest, I mean, even just the examples that I just mentioned, they are quite broad, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, there is really a lot of different uh, areas to cover. If you look at our overall um, uh, investment portfolio, you actually see that, uh, you know, just in the last year and a half, we've done about 30 investments in this space, you know, remote work, future work, 
uh, this kind of collaboration and so on. Um, and so it is, it is really one of the, one of the big topics that, we, uh, that we're investing in. Oh, perfect. Um, so uh, it's just disappeared now, but we just popped up onto the screen kind of a startups to watch list that you'd uh, put on. And there it is back again. Uh, so uh, we kind of touched on some of these before, but I wouldn't mind. I, you know, I was hoping that are these some of the things that Antler has marked? Like maybe you could give us um, you know, a short overview of maybe what they do when we've not mentioned them already and where you kind of see maybe some of the growth investment potential in them. Yeah. Um, so I think the first one was Atium. As yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah. so Atium... Um, is indeed, it's, it's uh, about building the human connections in teams, right? Whether it's a team that starts remote or it's a team that is now working distributed that didn't use to, by really uh, offering multiple kind of fun activities in a very easy to use digital platform that you can uh, uh, connect to uh, as a team and then kind of do, do that um, uh, within your kind of work uh, time, but really fo focusing on building this human connection. Um, uh, I think one that we haven't touched on yet, which is mentioned there on the bottom right, Cognicept is actually, yes. um, it's, a, it's a very different uh, nature than the other ones. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll tell you first what it is. And it is um, a robotics uh, automation company. Interesting. Now, so might... <laughs> in, in the way that they're, I guess you'll get onto this, but is this a supply chain, like <clears throat> uh, supermarket based? Like where's the, where do they kind of fit in? Yeah, so, so I think the, the what they do, um, Basically, is that you know, for example, in warehouses where you would have robots, physical robots, kind of moving around and moving boxes from one place to another, these robots uh, are very effective, but they also sometimes run into issues, right? And so you end up with this thing called human in the loop robotics, where you have a human at a distance monitoring and helping the robot to do its work in a good way. Ah. And and the reason why you know, I chose this example is because I think it's also good to bear in mind that we talk a lot about the workplace as being the office. But there are millions of people all over the world who never work in an office. Yeah. And they are also affected by these technological trends that are happening, but in a very different way. And so I think this is a beautiful example of a company that's actually bringing robots and humans together in the, let's say, a bit more tangible, you know, operational yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, activities. So what, how, what's their kind of plan? How do they... You know, intend to scale up or move. Have they decided that yet? Or? Yeah, so they, uh, they actually started out of, uh, out of our Singapore cohort, um, and, uh, but very quickly figured out that the US is, uh, is a very interesting market for them. Uh, so then with a nice uh, you know, follow-on investment round after us, also from Sequoia Capital, um, they then expanded into the US. And now you know, the way they do it, it's basically uh, uh, you know, hardcore B2B, you know, getting into those uh, operators who have like, large plants and warehouses and so on, um, where they can then quickly uh, op you know, deploy their software across multiple different kinds of robots and, uh, and start working uh, the services remotely. So it's, a, it's pretty scalable in the sense that um, uh, it can all be done again, remotely, yeah. but then, you know, built onto uh, the robots that are already present in many different types of setups. Perfect. Um, so before we go and I'll ask you one last question before we go and actually speak to some of the startups, um, I guess, like, where should solution providers, companies like this be looking for kind of potential partnerships? Do you have any, like, advice for, you know, people who might be out there with their own businesses? Like, how do they... You know, get in touch with people like yourself or other partners or maybe even some of these companies if they want to like work together with them yeah absolutely so um i mean i think in general um one thing that's also become much more tolerated these days is the uh the direct outreach right yeah. if you uh, if you haven't been in touch with that company yet you know virtually reaching out is now more common than ever so i would say definitely don't shy away from that uh, of course it's always good uh, to actually look at uh, you know companies uh, uh, publicly advertised kind of uh, communication channels and like how do they like to be get in touch with and you know in the case of Antler um, you can always just uh, contact us directly from the website and that's pretty straightforward um, uh, but I would say you know if you think about you know how do you really want to partner with these types of solutions I think there's a few ways um, uh, that I like to think about it which is first of all which problem are you really solving mm. as an entrepreneur and then which customers do you want to get to and who already has those customers? And now what I think you'll start seeing more and more is partnerships to basically offer multiple different of the types of services that we've been talking about to the same customers, right? And there is no need for everybody to individually go and bang on all the doors of the customers. So if you can bundle up with other parties that are offering a slightly different service, but that's very complimentary, I think that can be a huge growth hack for a lot of entrepreneurs today. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Um, so we actually, as I mentioned before, we have two startups uh, that you know, uh, you're actually mentioned with us today. And we're going to how it's going to go is we're going to have a three minute elevator pitch from both of them. And then after each of them, there's going to be a two minute Q&A. So the first one we have up is uh, Timiko. 
Timiko? Timiko. Timiko, I got it right first time. Didn't even need to correct myself. Uh, we have Charlotte Eckeland, the CEO of Timiko. Um, so the floor should be yours um, and we'll just pass it over to you to do your three minute, three minute elevator pitch. Anyone who's watching, if you have any questions, please at Q&A in the chat and we'll put them to Charlotte afterwards. Hi everyone, thank you so much for having us. Uh, I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to Timico and we are uh, creating everyday work happiness anywhere by providing you with online offices. So um, I will try to uh, share my screen if that's possible uh, because the way to show you how we do that is by showing you our office online. So let's see if that works. All right, cool. So welcome to our office. This is our office. We're a fully distributed team of nine people working from different countries. So we actually have never met in person. And as you can see, an online office in Timico consists of various rooms and uh, each office becomes unique because they are 100% adjustable. So what can you do in this office? Obviously you can have all your scheduled meetings here such as daily stand-ups and whatnot, but you can also interact ad hoc because as we've heard today, that is something people really miss working remotely. So if I jump in here into that room, that's my avatar. You can just be in one room at the time in Timico. What will happen is that here we can see that Linda and Boris are sitting and uh, chilling right now. So then I can turn on my camera and I also can turn on my, I can use the walkie talkie. Hi guys. Uh, and they will hear me ad hoc. Now they don't hear me, I turn off the sound. Let's say we have a brilliant idea and we need Oleg, our CTO in the room. What we can do then is just hover over him and invite him. And then that way all the four of us can have a spontaneous conversation. Uh, so this brings back the serendipity moments, the water cooler talks, the uh, brainstorming that we were talking about early. So what happens when I uh, click on invite him now uh, is that he can select whether he wants to join or not. Uh, hey Oleg, sorry, I'm just uh, demoing. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Cool. So what else? Um, of course, you can also uh, collaborate in uh, cloud tools. So we uh, can pin things into rooms and you can look at, for instance, uh, Google Docs or something like that together. And if you wanna take a break, uh, there's two different things you can do. So as you all know, you work from home, uh, you wanna take a break, either you just click on this grab a coffee button here and people who are not in focus mode right here who do not wanna be disturbed will be notified and they can then select if they wanna join you or not. Or uh, the other thing you can do is to go into the games room and challenge one of your coworkers uh, on a game. So yeah, that's the brief version of what we do. Uh, we're live on five continents in beta. We haven't launched yet and we've been around for about a year. And now onto the questions. So thank you very much for that, Charlotte. And uh, the Etimico looks awesome. So I guess the first question is, uh, what sort of games are there in that games room? <laughs> Um, I think you should ask ATM uh, in a moment. Uh, at this point, we are actually uh, using the type of games that leverage people. So it's the plank challenge, it's musical chairs, uh, it's, it's all kinds of weird things you can do for either five minutes or 10 minutes or uh, longer term games like uh, competitions with, uh, with pictures and Slack and whatnot, just to keep the, uh, the fun going. That sounds amazing. Um, so we've got a question from Tom Scott. And does this link in any way to existing calendar applications uh, in terms of busy or not busy? Um, and there's kind of a, a vaguely connected one with that as well is does it work with or integrate with Slack? You, they both those questions just nailed what's currently uh, under production and coming in our next product release. Okay. And did you know how all that's going to work? Can you give us any sneak peeks or? Uh, sneak peeks, no, uh, <laughs> but uh, you will be able to book a room in Timico. Uh, and uh, right now you can share the link to a room for the calendar um, booking. 
and the Slack integration is a quite big project. Uh, mm. But we know that teams that we uh, that use us usually use Slack, so we want it to be smooth, and uh, anything that happens there should be visible also in Teams. So what's your kind of best use case? Like how would you say on a standard day, should it be one of those, uh, should Timico be one of those things that you always have like a little call of your immediate team going on? Or do you meant to, do you foresee people allocating like, you know, an hour when they don't have any meetings to chat? How, how do you feel it slots in? Uh, very good question. So the use case is you log in in the morning and then it's always on in the background. And sometimes you just sit and co-work with the camera, like you have the feeling of sitting opposite of someone. Sometimes you're in meetings and sometimes you're in focus mode because sometimes you really don't want to be disturbed. Yeah. Uh, so you just, you just have to use the focus room. Yeah, I can understand that. I also think I don't have a very like attractive work face. I think I get look quite gormless. So uh, as long as it's not on 24-7. I think you look fine. Where I'm like, yeah, because yeah, I'm, you know, I'm focusing on something. As soon as I'm on my computer screen, I'll just start to slide into oblivion. Um, but Charlotte, thank you so much. I really enjoyed hearing about Team Eco. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Uh, really enjoyed it. Um, next up, we have, we have Guido Nuke, the founder and CEO of Atium. And they have got their free, mi free minute elevator pitch coming up right now. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks so much for this opportunity. So ATU has really built a web app with regular virtual team building activities that remote teams use to foster human connection and build trust. Those are really those vital elements that Yari also talked about that create an effective team culture. As you may have all experienced recently, um, this is incredibly hard to do remotely. Like what happens really natural in an in-office environment through the water cooler, the coffee machine, before a meeting, when you're remote, you have to be intentional about creating those moments. And that means that as a team lead, you, it suddenly falls on you to build those connections and facilitate that creation of trust. And that is difficult. Like you're on the spot, uh, put on the spot for something that's not actually your core job. You suddenly have to uh, make sure that there is consistency. Like just like building a regular uh, relationship actually Re relies on regular interaction. Trust also relies on consistency. And lastly, it takes real effort and time to find activities and interventions that are inclusive as well as effective, that really build that trust. Uh, so we've been working for the last nine months with different uh, fully remote first companies, teams at companies that are fully remote like TopTel, GitLab, but also at newly remote companies like PwC, Amazon, and Spotify to incorporate best practices and to really create a product that people, remote teams, love to use. Our app ties in social moments to meetings that you already do as a team. We inject activities that are specifically designed to get to know your colleagues better, to share a little bit of vulnerability, but also to really just have fun. And we incorporate the latest of uh, organizational psychology and the best of UX and game design. But let me show you how that actually looks like. So right now, I'm showing you our latest activity. This is our activity of the month. That means that you can actually play this uh, fully for free and access it with your team right now. Um, it's called Fact Bucket, where the theme for today, for this round, is a mistake that you made this week. So it's really about like sharing that vulnerability here. I know I already set this up before with the team, so I know this is Sarah, um, and this is probably Sri. So then I confirm my selection. So I, I'm, I'm imagining a little bit like what would be their mistakes that they made. And although it's not so much about that activity, it's much more about the conversation that happens afterwards, right? So I can now see who voted for what, and that's how we can start talking about it. Um, you can join us right now um, at atm.app or try this activity at, at activityofthemonth.com. Thank you very much for that, Guido. That was very interesting. I kind of want to play with it myself. So I guess the first question is, what are the activities on ATM that you found people connect with most? I know you showed that fact one. Um, are there any other 
games or things that have really uh, captured people's imaginations? Well, I think um, wait, I'm, I'm, I see I'm still sharing my screen, but I cannot find it. But well, anyway, uh, I think like the gift tournament one that uh, that Yari already talked about is definitely one that people really enjoy a lot. And a last one that I want to name is the the one that we call the Great Mimic an Animal Game, where teams um, like where you have to mimic an animal and then others guess what animal you're trying to mimic. And that really helps also with breaking down th those barriers that might be there in a team because it builds that psychological safety. Um, so we've got a question in here um, that, you know, about really about different personality types and how you adapt with that. So, you know, there are lots of people who love games, love being put on the spot, but also probably an equal number of people who find that sort of experience awkward or a bit tough. Um, so have you adapted ATM or plan to adapt ATM uh, to be as inclusive as possible to cover as many different personality types? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that is super important to actually really think about and also work with as a team lead, like how can I um, involve my whole team? Um, because of that, we have also been working on uh, asynchronous activities, which are a little bit less um, dependent on the extrovertness of, of somebody in a team. Um, but even even the ones that we have already, I think, for example, this fact bucket one is again, it's more about that conversation um, and it's a little less about like that. Yeah, being really extrovert, but it's, it's finding the balance and we're continuously trying to improve activities and come up with new ones in order to include more and more people and more and more topics. Cool. Thank you very much for that, Guido. Uh, I know so we, we sort of got a few questions in, but unfortunately, that little segment's up. I'm sure if you go and look up um, ATM or Teamico and you have more questions, I'm sure they would be, they'd absolutely love to hear from you. Um, so thank you to both startups once again and for uh, Yari for your time. Very much enjoyed our conversation. Um, and now we'll move on to the final part of this fantastic day. See you in a second.